The following is a Candlepin Stars and Strikes rebroadcast featuring some of our most memorable programs. everybody and welcome once again to Park Place Lanes here in Wyndham, New Hampshire and it's time once again for Stars and Strikes Doubles. We've gla we're glad that you have joined us, Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy and uh, well we're glad you're here this week but if you missed last week you really missed a uh, honey of a match. Unbelievable. I mean you missed uh, four or five or six open boxes. <laughs> the, rest, <laughs> the rest of them were marks. Phil Clough and Bob Mays are just an uh, amazing score last week for bowling that kind of uh, scotch doubles format. All right and they'll of course be uh, trying to make it two wins in a row. Of course we move into our second week of the doubles series today. Uh, in two weeks we'll be determining which team of this group will be going on to the Stars and Strikes doubles tournament of champions coming up in the spring. Already of course Gary Carrington and Jack Ray that team has already moved into the Tournament of Champions with a three-string total of 448. Let's meet our two teams for this particular show. First of all, the guys who came up with an amazing 434 last week, the number four seeded team, Bob Mazur and Phil Clough. Okay, Bob Mazur comes in averaging 122. His roll-off score is 674. And Phil Clough... Uh from Warren, Massachusetts, 114 average, and his roll-off score, 668. And, of course, they had uh, 20 marks in 30 frames last week, uh, rolling that 434, yet they only beat Bob Buxton and Reggie DeLine by five pins as they rolled an outstanding 429 uh, in a losing effort. Well, today we'll see if Mazer and Clough can make it two in a row, and the team they will face, the number three-seeded team for this series, Tom O'Brien and Glenn LeBlanc. Okay, on your uh, left to Tom O'Brien from Natick, Massachusetts, average, average is 127. His roll-off score, 675, and his partner, Glenn LeBlanc, who's been with us before, average also 127. His roll-off score, 668. The winner, of course, of this match moves into our semifinal week next week on up toward the big money and the qualification for the Tournament of Champions. Of course, sponsored by Tri-State Megabucks, and as we always mention, uh, they've been terrific supporters of this program, and we appreciate their involvement. We're glad you're here, too. We're looking forward to this doubles match. We've got three strings of bowling coming up, and we'll get it started right after these messages. Don't go away. Okay, once again, last week, if you missed it, Bob Mazur and Phil Clough with an outstanding three, uh, make it 429. They were over 302 games. <laughs> 429 was their uh, three string total. Make it 434. 429 was for Bob Buxton and uh, Reggie DeLine. That score keeps going up even as I'm talking about it. <laughs> so, uh, in any event, Bob Mazur and Phil Clough have advanced out of that number four spot, and they face today the number three seeded team of Tom O'Brien and Glenn LeBlanc. The winners of this match will move on to face Owen Martin and John Mafio next week. And as you saw in two weeks, Mike Morrill and Jack Quinn will be here to defend that number one position. Bob Mazur is going to get us started here. On lane 32 at Park Place. Well, not too bad after everything is said and done, but look like he's going to have a mess left up there at first, but he leaves himself the 5, 9, 10, and the piece of wood to the far left of the five pin. He'll try to sweep that across. And there it is. If you're going to have that shot, <laughs> you'd like to have the wood set Absolutely. up like that. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Nice pocket hit, but this turns is out what a I thin. thought yeah. he was going to be left with something like this last time. This time he didn't get the extra pin action and he does leave himself the seven, the eight, and then the triangle six, nine, ten. Let's see if he can make it happen. Good effort. Try to come off the wall. Want to mention also our participating sponsors for this double series on Stars and Strikes Doubles. The folks from Somerville Lumber, where you can get it right the first time. Somerville Lumber. 25 in the first two for Bob Mazur, and we'll swing over to our third place team now in our first look at Tom O'Brien making his Stars and Strikes debut. The big lefty, and he fires the ball hard, and he's got the 5-8 remaining for a spare. Came right out punching, didn't he? Boy. Nothing timid about him. He's himself the 5 and the 8. There you go. That's the way you have to do it. You can't be three games in front of the lights. You just got to come out firing. Oh. 
leaves the triangle. Seven oh, fill on the spare. Tom is from Natick, Mass. And he's got a couple of spares. Make it two in a row. In his first trip. And to think I had to explain the format to him when he started. <laughs> I guess he understands I it guess now. he understands, yes, two marks. <laughs> Phil Clough now for the team of Mazer and Clough, and it was Phil Clough's clutch mark in the 10th last week, knocking the nine Phil down and then converting the single pin, the four, for a critical spare in the last box, and the last ball decided the match. Kind of poetic justice, the way that match went last week. Phil misses a spare opportunity here in the third and settles for a nine. Phil just had incredible production last week, though. Phil bowled 16 boxes in all for the team, and he had 12 marks in those 16 boxes. Incredible. Well, this one's going to be difficult. Three, five, six, ten. with the wood could hurt him. Well, mm. we'll never know because he's flush on the three pin, just drove it straight back. Pretty good in 10, though. And now stepping up to work on the spare left by his partner, Tom O'Brien, is this man, Glenn LeBlanc. Glenn has been with us on three previous occasions. He's anxious to get that first win. I was talking about it before the show. We have two left-handers. Yeah, lefties against the righties. Next week, we got the M&M &M boys. <laughs> Mafio and Martin. For the spare. Ooh, almost. Very close. Played out the triangle, but left the 10. Nine-pin lead for the team of LeBlanc and O'Brien after three. Glenn LeBlanc, as I mentioned, from Greenville. Does most of his bowling at Bowling Acres out in Peterborough, New Hampshire. Mentioned a few weeks ago, we have a lot of faithful viewers, Stars and Strikes fans out in the Peterborough area. Yes, oh, nice shot. Good recovery by Glenn LeBlanc, the spare in the fourth. Three out of four boxes are marks for the team of O'Brien and LeBlanc. Bob Mazur has his only mark for the team so far, and he's up there now in lane 32. of wood in front will roll off. It appears, well, maybe it won't. If it does stay there, it's clearly out of play. Joe Pagley is going to go down and take a look at it. <coughs> the three, six, and ten remaining. His wife is sitting in the front row, and he says he's unbendable. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Mazur with the eight. Uh. The uh, runners up in this match will share $200 in prize money and get runner-up plaques from the NNR Trophy Company of Winchenden, Mass. The winners, of course, advance to face Owen Martin and John Mafio next week in our semifinal week. Well, Bob had the right idea, but he caught it a little thin on the two pin. Try and take out the nine and 10 for the 10, and he does. But they've only had the one mark so far. In the first box, as you see the scoreboard, and the team of O'Brien and LeBlanc have three out of four marks, all spares, and this will be the fill on that Spare in the fourth. Boy, he is very, very powerful when he throws the ball. Of course, he's a tall guy, probably six, maybe six three, six four. Tom O'Brien and that big arm swing, and he generates an awful lot of speed. 
Just looking at the five and the nine, waiting for the wood to settle down. Oh, right on it. That was not an easy shot either. You're absolutely right. I thought the wood might have hurt the shot, but he drove the ball right off the five pin, right into the wood and the nine pin. It's interesting where he ends up, too. He's right next to the right-hand channel when he finishes his approach. Nine drop with a seven pin and some moving wood, and Tom will step back to take a look at it, as will we. Well, he wants to come up high on it. If he misses the right-hand tip, then if he hits the red line, the ball may come off the wall, but he's up high enough. And it's three in a row. Five out of six boxes are marks. Tom O'Brien is four for four. Four spares. Something about the rookies, I guess. Mm. This ladder that come on, they just do extremely well. And here's the guy who had such a great week last week, Phil Clough. Three, five, ten left for Phil. Let's see what that wood settles down. It'd be nice if it rests against the three pin form, and it does. He should be able to sweep the wood right straight across and into the 10 pin. Second mark for the team. Spare up in the seventh. You see, you know, the wood just carries on and through for the 10. Really needed that one. So down by 28. Seven fill. Keep it up, Bobby. Well, tough spare leave here. The wood against the three is going to have to come up high on it. Oh, like nice that. shot. Perfect. Made it look easy. Was not an easy shot. See, he had to be up that high to carry the five pin. Well, Glenn LeBlanc, seeing if he can continue that streak of three in a row. And of course, I mentioned five out of six. Love to see that nine pin kick out, but it'll stay there. All over, Glenn. Ooh. Oh, I thought he would carry that uh, nine pin, that ball, because he was kind of heavy on the head pin to begin with. Looked like the ball s deflected and slipped right by the nine pin, just missing it. So he'll settle for the 10. The team, though, leading by 28, although they are opposite, as you see, the spare. Left by Mazer and Clough in the eighth. Oh, oh big boy. strike, wow. First strike of the day. And that was a quick one. Just buries it in the one-two pocket. Just a matter of time. Bob Mazur. Missing the head pin. One, seven, and nine pins left. Hmm. Not only is this a... Uh, battle between the left-handers and the right-handers, but also the contrast in styles, too. The two lefties throw very, very hard, and Bob Mazur and Phil Clough a little more deliberate and not quite as much pace on the ball. One oh six through nine, the team of Mazur and Clough. And if I had my choice, I would think I would take, uh, although looking at the score, probably be People probably say I was crazy, but this is the type of house that you want to leave the pins on the plate as long as you can. And the hard throwers a lot of times uh, remove most of the wood before it does all the damage. Now you can't say that that is true at this point in time because O'Brien and LeBlanc throw hard and they're at 117 with two balls to come in the eighth. 115 for the team of Mazur and Clough to begin. Meanwhile, Tom O'Brien, who has four spares in the four boxes he's been up there so far, comes up filling a strike left by his partner. He's right back on the head pin, but this time full through the middle. One thirty through nine. And a 24-pin advantage. Game number one, week number two of 
Stars and strikes doubles. Ooh. And that's what he removes. Wow. Punch through the middle. And now the half Worcester left. See if he can convert it. Got a chance. Huh. Nope. It won't happen. That piece of wood very much in play. And very much a roadblock. It'll be a nine and a 139 for the team of O'Brien and LeBlanc. They lead by 24 at the end of one. Still two games to go on Stars of Strikes doubles. Don't go away. We're coming right back. Middle game. Here on Stars and Strikes doubles, Glenn LeBlanc to lead it off. His team with the advantage. Right in the pocket, the Brooklyn pocket for the left-hander, the 1-3. Interesting style, watch the first couple steps. He takes it like a five-step approach. One, two, three, four-step approach. The first, whoa, just sliding by the object would be the five. Generates a lot of momentum with the four steps. Is it right? Well, for him it's right. <laughs> uh, I like to see most bowlers keep to the three step. Always a chance of making an error in timing if you take that extra step and it's really no benefit to you at all. But they say if it's not broke, don't fix it. Glenn has probably used this style for years. And with his 127 average, I guess it works. Isn't it also somewhat unusual? I, I think it's probably fair to say that the majority of candle pin bowlers use an odd number of steps rather than an right. even number because you generally That's start right. on the foot that you're going to slide with. Right. Asked of many, many times of people, should I change to three? And the answer to that is, do you want to? <laughs> if they want to, we change them. If not, then it's got to be their idea, because it is, at first, is a drastic change to, to go from four to three. But I usually can have them straightened out in 15 or 20 minutes. Of course, their average goes from 90 to 65, but <laughs> they bounce right back. No, I'm only kidding. Well, it's like I'm rebuilding your golf swing. You know, you That's have right. To drop down a little bit before you can get your score back the way you want it. Golf. Phil Clough almost with the conversion, but leaves the 10 pin. Well, I can't wait for next next golf season, Doug. <laughs> I know we can break 100 next year. I know we can. <laughs> we cut down the number of holes to seven. <laughs> Phil Clough moving over to lane 31. We mentioned our scoreboard. No, we haven't. In fact, I've. Uh, Neglected to mention him, and I had been meaning to do that, and I'm yeah, glad I you brought you it up. Him or something. No, I just just with so many things going on here on <laughs> Stars and Strikes doubles, we have to keep it all straight, and we have a uh, first timer handling the big scoreboard here at Park Place Lanes. You don't see him, but the folks here and the bowlers see him because they are constantly looking over to check the score and see what's happening here on Stars and Strikes doubles. Sean Grandy is keeping the big scoreboard for us here and doing an outstanding job. Joe Paglia, of course, our lob line judge. Outstanding job as well. And Tom O'Brien unloading with a nine drop. And that was an outstanding first ball. <laughs> so we've got all the outstandings out of the way. <laughs> now Tom is gonna go after the nine pin for a spare. Now the wood's gonna be far enough away so he'll have a clear shot at it. Tom does a lot of his bowling at the Fairway Sports World in Natick, his hometown, and also at the Sudbury Bowl in Sudbury when he slips by. Tom is the president and CEO of Venture Enterprises. Nine box for Tom. Two left covers that. I mentioned to Tom that uh, where we tape Stars and Strikes doubles generally on a weekday that 
people have to make arrangements to take time off and so forth, rearrange their schedules to be here. And he said, well, but I won't have that problem. He said, I'm the boss. <laughs> I say that a lot too, but I no, hope doesn't but, believe but me. But nobody listens, right? <laughs> no. You are? Since when? <laughs> You'll be back here at 4 o'clock. <laughs> Uh, pretty good out by Bob Mazur after that first ball. It didn't look like it was that bad, but he left himself a mess up there and was able to work it out for a 10. But the team of Mazur and Clough are not on the head pin with that first ball the way they were last week. Bob leaves himself the one and the two pins left. He'll match that spare already put up. And we will, we will break with each team a spare up in the fourth middle game of Stars and Strikes Doubles. We'll be back. Back we are in Glenn LeBlanc, set to fill a mark left by his partner, Tom O'Brien. Oh, well, that's interesting. <laughs> It was the half wister to begin with, and one of those two pins came back and knocked down the five pin. So all said and done, it's a three fill. It looked for a moment like he was going to just take out the three pin. The team of O'Brien and LeBlanc in the lead. They had a 24 pin advantage coming into this game. So far, Mazer and Clough have not been able to make a move. And there is the half Worcester, right. Okay, work it out. Okay, grab a couple. Well, be a chance for Bob Mazur and Phil Clough to climb back in this a little bit. Two open frames to work on. And it's an eight frame, 57 through six. Seven pin rocking for Phil Clough. Mm, no. <laughs> Almost stole one. Gave it a scare. Well, the nine fill gives Phil Clough and Bob Mazur a little bit of an edge here in this second game. They've taken six pins off the lead. Makeable spare, the one, three, uh, one, two, nine, ten. And he's got it. Good shot for Phil Clough as he puts the spare up in the sixth. And we'll take another look at it. The wood, of course in that favorable position, heading back to take out the nine and the 10. So that may cut a little more off this lead. Whoa, got a break with that 10 pin going down. Dan Murphy, of course, for those of you who weren't here last week in the second week of what will become at least a four week cold. <laughs> <laughs> just hangs around and hangs around. You just can't seem to get rid of it. That's for sure. Spare in the seventh for Tom O'Brien. By the way, before we go any farther, I want to remind you that our next taping for Stars and Strikes doubles here at Park Place Lanes, Tom O'Brien with the strike on spare, answering the call as Mazer and Clough get a couple of marks up on the board. Kicking out the five pin. Bob Mazer now. He's filling a spare with a six. The one, seven, nine, and 10, and Bob a little bit off target. Started to mention 
our next doubles taping here on Stars and Strikes will be Tuesday, November the 12th, just two days from now. So if you'd like to join us here at Park Place Lanes in Wyndham, we'd love to see you. We begin generally around 9.30, quarter of 10 in the morning, and we go all day. So whether it be in the morning or the afternoon, if you're in the neighborhood, stop on by. Route 28 in Wyndham, New Hampshire, not far from Route 93 in Canopy Lake Park. And again, we'll be taping on Tuesday, November the 12th. Stars and Strikes doubles. Ten box for Bob Mazur, a couple of tens, in fact. And that will bring Glenn LeBlanc up now, working on the strike left by Tom O'Brien. The team of O'Brien and LeBlanc have uh, been able to fend off Mazur and Clough here in this second game to preserve their lead. They had a 24 pin lead coming in. And remember, this is a strike fill for Glenn LeBlanc. So they are going to add to that lead. Spare on strike for Glenn LeBlanc. Gives him 107 through nine. Ooh, I was hoping that Wood would take out some more, but it didn't. Six fill. Tough shot to make. Ooh, almost. The only thing you can do with that shot is go after the triangle and hope you can cut it clean and jump the four pin into the five or come off the wall. But it's a fine finish to a rough start in that game, 57 mm -hmm. through six and ended up with one and 23, so. 262 total for the team. Phil Clough now. Would love to put a couple of marks up to make the task a little easier in game three. It's a pretty good looking ball going in, but leaves himself the triangle, six, nine, 10 on the right with a seven pin. If he clips the triangle, he's got a shot. Nope. Now, a little farther to the right. Well, if Phil can put up some kind of a mark here in the 10th, he can limit the addition to the lead somewhat by O'Brien and LeBlanc here in the second game. In the pocket again, this time he'll leave the diamond, but the wood makes this one a very makeable shot. Two, four, uh, five, eight. Ooh, when he went by. Actually, you could see he was a little late with his with his arm swing, and he usually can tell because they're fighting with the body English. They know the ball's going to be off to the right, and they try to fight it back. Ten for a one ten, and a two string total of two twenty five. So there you see it. After two games, the team of O'Brien and LeBlanc with the lead. One game to go, and we'll have it after we have these words. Well, we've got one game to go, and the team of Mazur and Clough has some work to do. Bob Mazur will lead it off. And there are a couple of critical pins there as the 9 and 10 kick out for Bob. And the spare in the first. Well, you're down by 37. You gotta get a whole bunch of marks, probably. That's one way to start. Eight fill. And it's on a spare. And they just gotta keep marking. Uh oh. Yeah, I noticed when I saw the ball going down, I'm directly behind him. It looked like he was going to be heavy on the six pin. Boy, to do that, you're missing that shot by a quarter of an inch, an eighth of an inch, one way or the other, and you would make the spare. What you don't want to do with the two pinner is go by the object pin. Tom O'Brien. Both teams electing to keep the same uh, rotation they were in. And Tom O'Brien with another big strike. 
See where his sliding foot ends up. Well, he can't quite catch it, but he's right next to the channel. He turns the ball over left to right. And that ball broke right back into the one-two pocket. This time he went a little full in the head pin, and he leaves himself the two, four, six, ten. Eleven marks for the team of O'Brien and LeBlanc. Three of them strikes. Seven Phil. It's Reggie DeLine is still here watching this match, and after bowling what they did last week, he's saying, why did you guys bowl like this against us? <laughs> <laughs> At this point, they were, what, 302, 305, Clough and uh, right. Hazer? They're 225 today. Everything but the five. Mazer and Clough have six marks as a team, all spares. Oh, no. Ooh, wow. About the only place that you can miss that shot. Further to the left would have used the left-hand wood. To the right would have used the wood that you see on the plate now. And, uh, well, just quite unlucky, really. Watch the ball deflect one way, the pin the other. Right there. Back to the action, and Phil is faced with another ugly one. <laughs> A diamond on the right, and the seven pin. Oh, oh. no trouble at all, huh? What's the problem? <laughs> <laughs> no problem there. <laughs> Great shot. Wow. Made it look routine. You see Glenn's record on our show. Of course, that was with the singles show, 0-3. So he's trying to get that first W, as Doug mentioned earlier in the show. And he's got some help today in the first oh. half, Tom O'Brien. And that'll help. Shots like that. The first ball got away, recovers for a spare. Seven fill, difficult shot though. The two, the five, and the eight. Got to be heavy on the two to get the eight, but then sometimes you'll leave the five. Okay, grab one or two. And it'll be an eight box. 51 through four, we will pause right here. The team of O'Brien and LeBlanc in the lead. Six frames to go. We shall return. Bob Mazur working on a spare in the fourth for his team. They need more spares and strikes too. No break there on the uh, seven fill. Well, let's see what happens with this wood. It may help him out a little bit. 6-10 in the right with the 7-pin. You want to stay as close to the 6-10 as he can. Well, then right next to the 7. <laughs> uh, he's got a choice here. I think he's going to have to go after the 6-10. Uh, that was mm. a tough. I don't know if he had the angle, but 6 of one, half dozen of another. It's your choice. Now waiting for the wood again on the 6-10. Pretty much out of play, and Bob converts it for the 10 box. It's easy to say, but that might have been the shot. If he cut it like that, he would have used the wood in between or next to the seven pin. That's what makes this game interesting. Ooh. It'll be two opens for the team. 10 and a seven. A couple marks here. It's very, very difficult for Bob Mazur and Phil Clough to come back. Next week, Owen Martin and John Mafio will be here. Spare for Tom O'Brien. Excellent 
Played it on the outside. He played a, stayed away from the front piece of wood, which might have given him some trouble. Hit the head pin clean into the two, and then finally the seven. Well, I'll tell you what, Tom has made his first appearance here on Stars and Strikes, a very productive one. He's bowled very well. That's 10 marks now for Tom O'Brien as he puts two spares together in the fifth and sixth to further extend the lead. Phil Clough now for his final two of the day. Spare up in the seventh. You talk about the quirks of the game, and last week, these guys rolling a 434, they just couldn't miss. And this week, the break's not going their way. And Last week, that would have probably been a nine pin drop with a plank in front. This week, <laughs> eight pin drop and a difficult piece of wood out front. Not every time we say that, it makes it look easy. <laughs> Make the color man look stupid. You know, that's, that's <laughs> we can't win the match, we'll do that. <laughs> so Phil Clough ends his efforts for the day with a couple of marks. And now Glenn LeBlanc for his final turn. He's filling a spare, and look at that. He's way down on the quarter pin and takes out eight. It was quick eight, too. <laughs> Just leaves the head pin and the eight pin. Yes. yes, off the wall, off the wall, and then finally the eight pin goes. Three marks in a row. Right side wall, left side wall, and the eight pin. You have to call those two cushion shots, don't you? I, I think so. Yeah, we'll have to check the rule book on that. <laughs> <laughs> on the fill, look out. Solid five pin. They seem to bowl in streaks today. Once one bowler got him, the team going, the other one seemed to follow. And I'll make it four marks in a row. Uh, as Glenn puts up two more to follow the two by his partner, and that may just about cinch it there. It's going to take pretty much all strikes now for Bob Mazur to make a comeback here. And the team has yet to throw a strike in this match. They threw mostly spares last week. They I was had just going to say. a lot of spares. Eight, 18 spares last week on only two strikes. Two strikes. But those spares last week came in big groups. At one point, they had seven marks in a row. That was a 10 box, not a nine that the computer put up there. I tell you, you just can't trust these computers. You can't. You can't. You've got to watch them every minute. The computers have bad days, too. I think it's catching my gold. <laughs> <laughs> Computer virus. I've heard it many times. <laughs> Bob Mazur converts for a 10 and a 125. It'll be a 350 for the team of Mazur and Clough. The issue already decided here. So next week, Owen Martin and John Maffio will be in. Seven fill for Tom O'Brien as. He steps up for the final two of this match. It's going to be a 400 triple. They're already with that 10 box at 396. So barring a disaster here in this last frame. I'll bet you lunch he goes over 400. <laughs> you win. Uh, you buy. <laughs> Three, five, six, ten. Yes. Oh, nice shot. Just cruising now. 144 and a ball to come. Take another look. Difficult shot. Could be a 150 game. Had a 139 opener. Dipped to a 123 middle. And now the finish. And it is a 152. For the team of Tom O'Brien and Glenn LeBlanc, they win this second week on Stars and Strikes doubles with an outstanding 4-14 over Bob Mazur and Phil Clough. We'll be back to award the prize money and talk to the bowlers in a minute. 
Welcome back to Park Place Lanes and Stars and Strikes Doubles, where we have just completed week two of this four-week ladder series, and the team of Tom O'Brien and Glenn LeBlanc combining for an outstanding 4-14 to come up victorious in this one as they knock off the team of Bob Mazur and Phil Clough with a score of 350. For uh, O'Brien and LeBlanc, they will now come back next week and try and make it two in a row against our number two-seeded team, uh, Owen Martin and John Mafio, the team, ironically, that uh, they lost to in a one-string roll-off just prior to uh, coming on this show here this week. So we'll talk about that in a little bit as I bring Dan Murphy in a little late, later on. But right now, let's talk to a couple of the bowlers. First of all, a round of applause for Bob Mazur and Phil Clough. They uh, came up short today, but of course had the outstanding uh, 434 last week. We have checks for you this time, gentlemen. and. Uh, it's sharing $200 uh, fourth place money. Uh, I, now I want I want you to explain. Now everybody wants to know how it happens that you <laughs> throw a 434 one week and and then nothing seems to go right the next week. Well, that's why they call it can't even <laughs> bowl. And, uh, yeah, I was uh, a little bit different this week. Uh, we wish we could have saved a few from the previous week, right. but we needed them all, so we'll try again. Was there anything uh, substantially different, Phil, as far as your game, uh, how you felt up there, or was it just a question of not getting the breaks this time? No, I just dunked today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was the key. I, I wondered what it was. Well, obviously, uh, a terrific match for, for Glenn and Tom, and they will move on, and as far as you guys are concerned, uh, more opportunities still ahead, uh, both in this show and in Stars and Strikes, and we appreciate your, uh, your coming by, and congratulations once again on an outstanding match last week. Congratulations, much. guys. Thank Bob you. Mazur and Phil Clough, thanks very much. And uh, now we get to uh, talk a little bit with our winners of 414. The lefties, bring them on up. Tom O'Brien and Glenn LeBlanc. The first time you've used your right hand all day to shake hands. Congratulations, guys. Step right in here close, Tom, so we'll get a good look at you on camera. And, uh, well, you guys were, were firing basically right from the start here. Well, we, uh, we got off to a quick start, and uh, fortunately we held on to the lead. Uh, Boy, it feels good to win, and, <laughs> and Tom carried me all all day. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's right for you, Glenn. Your first win here, so I know that must make you feel good. And uh, and for you, Tom, uh, your first time here, you seem very comfortable, though. Oh well, do the best I can. I know I had a good partner, so hopefully one of us could carry the load, and oh. we shared it. Also, if I recall, uh, you came up first time, got some marks early, uh, got some marks in that first ring under your belt, so then after that, everything's easy, right? Oh, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> real easy. <laughs> well, you guys uh, will be coming back next week, and obviously, as I mentioned a moment ago, you know very well uh, the guys you're going to be bowling against. Uh, you had to roll that extra game uh, to decide second place, and now you're going <laughs> to now you're gonna have to decide it all over again. Oh, well, hope we bring some good bowling next week. That's all. All right. Well, we look forward to seeing you both again. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, Tom O'Brien and Glenn LeBlanc with the big win, and we will uh, take a look at our ladder to bring you up to date on what will be coming up in the next two weeks. Dan Murphy will come back in here, and we'll talk a little bit about it. Again, the roll-off scores are individual for each bowler. They enter separately. This is something we have not uh, explained, Dan, for the last couple of weeks, and it bears repeating because these guys enter the roll-off separately, and then the scores are combined, and that's the uh, the result that you see those scores on the right. So 1343, the combined scores for both of these teams, O'Brien and LeBlanc, winners today. They'll come back and face Martin and Mafio next week. Martin and Mafio getting second place by virtue of that uh, special one-string roll-off, and now it's only fitting, I guess, that these two teams should meet again. Yes, it's really, it's no guarantee that the, the top man in the roll-off would even be on the number one seeded team. That, that could right. possibly happen, too. But, uh, well, it looks like it's going to take 400 to win these matches, the way it's been going. <laughs> so uh, Owen Martin and John Mafia have been waiting in the wings, and I'm sure they've watched the previous two weeks, so they know what they have to do. And uh, I know Owen very well, even though it's first time on, on this show, is an excellent can and bowler. And, of course, John Mafio has been with us quite a few times, so it should be an interesting matchup. And, of course, we have uh, two weeks remaining in this particular series. Uh, next week will be our semifinal week with the uh, team of Tom O'Brien and Glenn LeBlanc facing Owen Martin and John Mafio. And then uh, in two weeks' time, we'll be here for the series championship to decide uh, who will take home the $800 prize money and also the uh, spot in the Tournament of Champions, the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions coming up in the spring. And, of course, uh, in two weeks, Mike Morrill and Jack Quinn, our number one seeded team, will be here. And we mentioned earlier uh, last week, I believe it was, how close these scores all were from top to bottom, position one through ten. Uh, very close scores in this roll-up. That's right. I think it was a 12-pin swing, but uh, from second to fourth, it was only a matter of a couple, and we had a tie in there. So uh, they're both, uh, all the teams are equally matched, and we got a mix of veterans and newcomers to the show, but all excellent Candlepin bowlers. All right. You know the setup for next week. We'll be back starting at 12 noon on Sunday for Candlepin Stars and Strikes, and then, of course, at 1, don't go away. We'll be back on Stars and Strikes doubles. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole TV50 Sports crew, Doug Brown, so long from Park Place Lanes.